Coming up on UFC tonight, an injury update on John Jones. Is his arm worse than everyone originally thought? Plus, Brock Lesnar hasn't been involved in the UFC since last December, but find out how he was still directly affecting at least one current UFC heavyweight. And UFC 153 is this weekend. Stefan Bonner goes in as a huge underdog. Do you think the American psycho will retire if he wins? That's all coming up next on UFC Tonight. Here we go. And he rocks Castillo and he's out. Yeah. Antonio Bigfoot Silva. Wow. Ah. And it is over, John Dodson. Beautiful one, two. Welcome to UFC Tonight, the official news and information show of the UFC. I'm Todd Harris, sitting alongside Kenny Florian. Two upgrades, my friend. How do you like the new digs? This is unbelievable. I, I feel like I'm in UFC heaven right now. <laughs> I got all these bells and whistles and screens. I'm excited. And another nice upgrade, our new social media host, Leanne Tweeden joins us. How about that? You know what? Finally. Listen, let's be honest. I've been carrying this <laughs> show with my looks, with my wardrobe. Finally, we have someone, Leanne oh. Tweeden, who's going to really help out the show as far as the look department goes. And there's no way you look as good as she does in a skirt. See, see what I've been working with? Well, guys, I'm a huge MMA and UFC fan, and I am happy to be part of the family. Thank you. All right, guys, don't forget to tweet us throughout the show. Our Twitter handle is at UFC Tonight. Now back to you guys. All right, thanks, Leanne. Let's get right to the fights this weekend in our UFC It Now. The main event at UFC 153 is Anderson Silva versus Stefan Bonner in a three-round affair at 205 pounds. Kenny, Stefan opened up as a 14-to-1 underdog. Do you see this as a David versus Goliath situation? This is David versus Goliath. This is a Cinderella story. Uh, this is a Rocky story. I mean, Stefan Bonner can really get the biggest upset in UFC history. Anderson Silva, the greatest of all time. He's coming up to Stefan Bonner's weight class, though. And uh, this is going to be an excellent fight. All right, let's talk about the advantages that Anderson Silva may have at 205, and it's just three rounds. Well, you know, he's taking the fight on short notice. He's not fighting at 185 pounds, and that actually is an advantage uh, because he doesn't have to go through that weight cut. Um, you know, that's going to give him a lot of energy, and that's never been a problem. He's carried his knockout power at that weight cl class already. Everyone he's faced, he's knocked out in the first round, so he's got a, a bunch of different advantages there, yeah. All right, let's take a look at some stats, courtesy of Fight Metric. Up first, Anderson Silva. The spider holds several UFC records, including 15 straight wins, the most knockdowns, and an 87% finishing rate inside the octagon. On paper, this one should be entertaining because Stefan Bonner has the second most submission attempts among light heavyweights and the third most strikes landed in the division. And while Anderson Silva has the most KOs in UFC history, Bonner has never been knocked out in a fight, like ever. As we mentioned earlier, Stefan Bonner is one of the biggest underdogs in UFC history. Kenny has moved over to our Fuel TV Strike Zone set to tell us what Bonner has to do to shock the world and beat Anderson Silva. Kenny? Thanks, Todd. Well, there's no doubt that Stefan Bonner is a huge underdog in this fight, but he's also a huge 205 pounder. Uh, typically, Stefan likes to go forward and be very aggressive with the striking. Against Anderson Silva, you really can't do that. He will counter you and he will catch you. He is the best in the business when it comes to striking. So Stefan really is going to have to mix it up and do something differently if he wants to get the win against the greatest of all time. He has to be able to get in and get out. And when he does strike, he has to go second. As soon as Anderson Silva is done with this combination, he has to return fire. For him to go forward like Forrest did right there, he's going to get knocked out. Anderson Silva is too good there. If there is a weakness in Anderson Silva's game, it is on the ground. We have seen him vulnerable on the ground in the past, and Stefan Bonner has the fourth best takedown percentage in light heavyweight history. He can use his size advantage and strength advantage to use some serious ground and pound and open up one of those submission attempts. He is a black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, and as I mentioned, he has a lot of experience on the ground. He loves to go for the submission, and if he can do this, he can catch Anderson Silva and get the big upset win. Now, for more on this main event, let's welcome back Leanne Tweet. Thanks, Kenny. Let's say Stefan follows your advice, shocks the world, and beats Anderson Silva. Our UFC Tonight poll question wants to know what should he do next? Should the American psycho ride into the sunset and retire? 
drop to 185 and fight Anderson for his middleweight title, or get carte blanche to pick whomever he wants to fight next. Make sure you log on to fuel.tv slash UFC tonight to vote. Results later in the show. Todd and Kenny, back to you guys. Thanks, Leanne. Another intriguing fight on the 153 card, the return of Big Nog, Minotauro Nogueira. He takes on Dave Herman in a heavyweight tilt. Kenny, do you expect Big Nog to return back to form? I do expect him to return uh, back to form. And I tell you what, 100% healthy Nogueira is going to give a lot of problems to Dave Herman. You know, everyone talks about Stefan Bonner being a huge underdog uh, against Anderson Silva. Well, Dave Herman is going to be a huge underdog against Minotauro, in my opinion. Um, he hits very hard but he's not a technical striker like Minotauro is. And if he decides to use his wrestling skills, we see Herman really get in trouble on the ground, and he's facing a legend on the mat in Noguera. Well, the last time we saw Noguera was that brutal submission loss to Frank Mir. How does something like that play into the psyche of a fighter coming back? Well, you know, it, it would really play into the psyche of uh, Noguera if he was facing another submission artist like a Frank right. Mir, who's so dangerous. Dave Herman isn't going to submit you. That's not what he's known for. Um, it really it comes down to whether he's physically uh, okay to go out there uh, and perform like he normally does. Moving on, interesting light heavyweight bout between big-time UFC prospect Glover Teixeira and Fabio Maldonado. Kenny, initial thoughts on this fight? Well, you know, Glover Teixeira is a guy who really starts so quickly. And the bad news for Maldonado is that he does not start quickly. This is a guy who really needs to get hit a few times. He needs two and a half minutes to five minutes to get started. And against Teixeira, that could be too late. Teixeira not only can strike with you and knock guys out, but he's a guy who can take you down and submit you. So very tough matchup for Maldonado. Teixeira is a big-time prospect, and there's fighters out there, other big-name guys like a Shogun who have been offered this fight. A lot of guys just don't want to fight him. Well, you know what? A lot of people don't know who Teixeira is. I'm talking about the fans out there. Right. The hardcore fans may. Uh, but this is a guy who still is getting his feet wet in the UFC. And that is a huge risk for uh, uh, taking a fight against Glover Teixeira because he is so dangerous. Um, beating him, you don't gain too much. If you lose to him, right. uh, really drops you down that division. For more on that fight, let's welcome in our insider, Ariel Helwani. Ariel, as we mentioned, Glover was rumored to fight Shogun. That didn't happen. Then Rampage, that didn't happen. Now he's fighting Fabio Maldonado. How does he feel about all this switching? To be honest, Todd, he doesn't appear to be all that upset about the switch. I spoke to his longtime trainer, John Hackleman of the pit, and, and he said Glover is, is like a kid in the candy store training for this fight. You know, he's so excited to be fighting back in his home country of Brazil. He's just excited to be in the UFC after uh, many years outside of the organization. And, and I asked him, you know, everyone's talking about fast-tracking Glover to the title shot. I said, how far do you think he is away from a title shot? He said, three left hooks. And I said, in the same fight, he said no. So while we may be fast-tracking him, Glover's team wants to take their time with him. All right, thanks, Arrow. You've got a surprise report on Brock Lesnar's old gym a little later in the show. Now let's take a look at the rest of the UFC 153 pay-per-view card. There's an insane welterweight matchup between perennial contender John Fitch and fast-rising prospect Eric Silva. Phil Davis and Wagner Prado get to settle some unfinished business in the light heavyweight division. And in another exciting clash at 170, Damian Maya tangles with Rick Story. All right, Kenny, let's talk about these fights. Which is the one that you'd really like to see the most? Such a great card, Todd, but you gotta look at that. Uh, Fitch versus Silva fight. That fight's going to be amazing. Two of the top uh, welterweights in the world. Before all that, don't forget to watch as Anderson Silva and Stefan Bonner step up to the scales for the UFC 153 weigh-in. They're live on Fuel TV Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern. Plus, after the pay-per-view on Saturday, the exclusive Fuel TV coverage begins. The UFC 153 post-fight show live, presented by Kawasaki Saturday at 11 p.m. Eastern and only on Fuel TV. Still to come on UFC Tonight. Boom! That's all it takes. Pat Berry made headlines this week for calling out a heckler. But should he have been calling out Brock? A surprising update on HD's future. Plus, he might break that arm. An injury update on John Jones. How bad is the champ's arm? Find out on UFC Tonight, next. Welcome back to UFC tonight. Our peak moment of the week is flyweight John Dodson's knockout win over Formiga at UFC on FX5. The win earned Dodson a shot at Demetrius Johnson and the flyweight title. 
Similar to the Johnson Joseph Vita scrap, some fans started booing these 125 pounders early on. Well, Dana White stood up for the flyweights in Canada, and UFC heavyweight Pat Barry took it upon himself to stand up for them in Minnesota. Check out this twit pick of HD Barry in attendance at FX5, giving some booing fans a piece of his mind. All right, Kenny, have you ever called out fans in the crowd? Actually, you know, there was a time where I did uh, need to do that. Uh, there were these businessmen sitting next to me. Uh, they kept talking trash about the fighters, uh, criticizing the, the fact they could take a punch or whatever, right. getting tired. And uh, you know, I very sarcastically said to them, oh, you guys must be fighters and you guys must be pros because you guys obviously know what you're talking about. You know, obviously, they never took a punch in their life. Uh, you know, they shut up very, very quickly. And uh, every once in a while, you got you to do it. Did you offer to give them an idea of what it's like to get hit in the face? Uh, no, I didn't go that far. <laughs> very good. Well, for more on Pat Barry, let's go inside the octagon with Ariel Helwani. Ariel, Pat made headlines this weekend for the incident in the stands, but there's a more serious topic about his future. What is the latest? Well, you know, Todd, Pat's in a bit of a weird spot right now. As you may recall, a few months back, he left Rufus Sport in Milwaukee to go train with Team Death Clutch in Minneapolis because he needed to be around heavyweights. Well, after Brock Lesnar retired, the, the, the future of the gym was, was in limbo. No one knew what would happen to them, but Pat was very adamant on carrying the torch and the team stuck around. But a few weeks ago, another one of their champions, Cole Conrad, retired, and then suddenly the team dissolved. Team Death Clutch is no more, and now Pat Barry has no team. So he has since decided to link up with Greg Nelson's Minnesota Martial Arts Academy. And I spoke to him on Friday about the disappointment of not being with Team Death Clutch anymore and them essentially leaving him high and dry. You know, it's, I don't know, man. It's, it's uh, three years in Milwaukee and I left. I moved here. I'm up and moved here. Uh, brought everything here to train with a team of nothing but big guys. And now they're all gone. So once again, I'm the biggest guy in the gym. And Todd, for more of my interview with Pat Barry, you can check it out in its entirety right now over at Fuel.tv. We also talk about what's next for the man they call HD. Ariel, also Minnesota UFC lightweight Shane Roller suffered a tough loss to hometown fighter uh, Jacob Volkman. And afterward, Roller decided to retire. Uh, you spoke with him. Uh, why did Shane decide to hang it up? Well, you know, Kenny, uh, it appears as though Shane Roller has taken a page out of your book, except his, his reasons for retiring very much different. He said that he was essentially released from his UFC contract after the loss to Jacob Volkman. And once he, once he was given his pink slip, he decided to retire right then and there. Had he won, he said he would have kept going, but he just didn't want to go back into the, the regional circuit and have to work his way back up to the UFC. He didn't have that in him. So right now, he is a retired fighter at 33 years old, and he doesn't know what he'll do next, but he said he'll probably be in the wrestling world, which is obviously a world he knows a lot about. And finally, in the UFC on FX5 main event, Travis Brown lost to Bigfoot Silva in part because of an injury to his left leg early on in the first round. How's Brown doing? Well, all things considered, Todd, he's doing okay. Uh, he, he just met with his doctor on Monday, had an MRI, no surgery needed. He needs to be on the sidelines, though, for two to four months. He actually said that his doctor was impressed that the hamstring didn't completely tear off the bone, and, and so that's good news for him. Uh, he, he's obviously a little disappointed, and, and, and rightfully so, but he said that he can't wait to come back. He can't wait to prove to everyone that the reason he lost that fight was because of the injury and not because he's not good enough to hang with the likes of Bigfoot Silva. As always, great stuff, Ariel. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Todd. Coming up next, an injury update on John Jones's arm. Plus, Kenny tells us if Bones is the best light heavyweight ever. That's next on UFC Tonight. UFC Tonight is brought to you by Peak Motor Oil. With Peak Motor Oil, you're not just changing oil, you're saving gas. Son of a preacher who has gone from shelter to rock star. Welcome back to UFC tonight. John Jones is good. So good that at UFC 152, he had his arm popped by a Vitor Belfort armbar in the first round of his title defense. 
didn't tap, and ended up submitting the phenom. Our Ariel Helwani tells us that according to Jones' wrestling coach, Izzy Martinez, the injury that John suffered at UFC 152 was just a strain with no ligament damage. However, Ariel was told on Monday that Jones required a follow-up examination in Los Angeles because for whatever reason, the camp was told the first procedure may have been incomplete. As of this taping, no word on how that procedure went. For more on John Jones, let's go to Kenny and Leanne as we ask the analyst. Thanks, Todd. As always, you, the fans, provide the question, and Mr. Kenny Florian here delivers the answers. Kenny, are you ready? Always ready. All right, our first question is about John Jones. Nick wants to know, hey, Kenny, do you think John Jones is considered the best light heavyweight champ, or does he need to fight two more times at light heavyweight to be number one? John Jones is the best light heavyweight champ of all time. Uh, you look at the division that he's in right now, it's at its most competitive state, and this guy is dominating the competition. And you look at the time in which he's done it, unheard of. The skills that he's displaying out there in defending his title, uh, we haven't seen before. So well routed, so dangerous. This guy's the best in history. All right, next up, Blake MMA wants to know, Kenny, do you think Bigfoot Silva should fight Stefan Strew for the number one contender? Wow, that, that's a great fight. I love the fight, but uh, I don't think they're number one contenders uh, out of that fight. I don't think we're going to see the number one guy out of that. We have Alistair Overeem, we have Carwin Nelson coming up, so uh, love the fight, though. All right, third question, Brett asked, rumor has it the UFC is trying to add clauses in their contracts that restrict fighters from dangerous activities. Is it fair? Uh, I love it. I think it's a great idea. I think it is fair. Listen, I want to see fights. I don't want to see guys out there getting injured if it's not in the training room. Uh, we have enough problems already. Guys shouldn't be out doing other extreme sports. Stick to fighting, <laughs> make your money, retire, then do whatever the heck exactly. you want. Exactly, do it yeah. later, right? All right, this matchup hasn't officially been announced yet, but our final question, SJ Beck wants to know, Dan Henderson is a two-to-one underdog against Lyoto Machida. Do you think he should be an underdog? You know, I think it's a little generous for Lyoto Machida. Dan Henderson's a guy who can knock anybody out all the way up to heavyweight. But it is a good style matchup for Leo Machida, and there is a reason why he is the favorite. It's because of his speed. It's because he's an awkward southpaw. He's excellent on the ground. But more importantly, he has amazing footwork that can definitely give some problems to Dan Henderson. That way. Thanks, Kenny. You're the best. Now, if you guys want to ask Kenny a question, send along your tweets to at UFC Tonight using the hashtag AskTheAnalyst. Plenty more UFC Tonight after this. We'll be right back. UFC Tonight is brought to you by Buffalo Wild Wings. Wings, beer, sports. The American Psycho! The Spider is back! Accuracy is just insane. Man, I cannot wait for that fight. All right, welcome back to UFC Tonight. Here are some upcoming events presented by Buffalo Wild Wings. Saturday, November 17th, from the Bell Center in Montreal, Quebec, Canada, it's the return of GSP as he battles interim welterweight champ Carlos Condit to unify the belts at UFC 154. Before that, it's the first ever UFC event in China as Rich Franklin squares off against Kung Lee in Macau for UFC on Fuel TV 6. But this week, all eyes are on Anderson Silva and Stefan Bonner as they headline the UFC 153 pay-per-view from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. All right, speaking of Stefan, here are the final results of our UFC Tonight poll question. 47% of you fans think Stefan Bonner should retire on top, while only 35% want to see him get a rematch with Anderson for the middleweight belt. Todd and Kenny, what do you guys think? Do you agree with the fans? Come on, it should be C. If he wins, shouldn't he be able to do whatever he wants? I mean, if you win that, he should be able to do whatever he wants. Well, listen, if he beats Anderson Silva, the whole Stefan Bonner name becomes something completely <laughs> yeah. different. So uh, I don't think uh, the fans are going to let him sit back right. after that one. And if I beat Anderson Silva, with that luck, I would buy a lottery ticket because I would just try my luck at everything after that. All right, time to put Kenny to work one more time. It is the final round. All right, here we go, Kenny. John Fitch versus Eric Silva. Who do you like and why? You know, Eric Silva's really coming up. John Fitch, uh, a former number one right. welterweight in the world. 
Um, you know, I'm going to go with Eric Silva. I think his athleticism may be the difference in that fight against John Fitch. Going to go with Eric. And where does a win for one of those guys, where does that put them as far as the ranking? Do they move up big time? Anyone who beats John Fitch elevates themselves big time. Uh, and if John Fitch does that, you know, he puts himself right back into contention. All right, another tough one. Glover Teixeira versus Fabio Maldonado. Who wins that one? Glover gets this done in the first round. I think his striking is at a different level. Uh, his ground game is unbelievable. Teixeira, he's the real deal. This is an intriguing one as well. Big Nog coming back, taking on Dave Herman. What do you think? Uh, Noguera, assuming he's healthy, shouldn't have any problems with Dave Herman. Uh, he has uh, the superior striking uh, ability, and uh, he's a beast on the ground. Uh, Noguera gets it done early. I know you're a big fan of his. How important or how excited are you to see him back in the octagon healthy? Uh, very, very uh, excited. Uh, this is a guy who was a bigger superstar right. than Anderson Silva before, you know, before there was Anderson, it was Noguera. He was the biggest thing. So uh, Brazilian fans are going to go nuts. And speaking of Anderson, Anderson Silva, Stefan Bonner, do you think your fellow Ultimate Fighter, Season 1 alum Stefan Bonner, can and will shock the world? I would love to see Stefan pull it off. Uh, but the reality is he's facing a guy who is the greatest of all time in Anderson Silva, um, a, a guy who has a very long reach. You don't want to strike with Anderson Silva for too long. If he frustrates Stefan out there, um, it could be a long night or a short night for Stefan. Uh, Anderson Silva gets it done. Uh, there's no one out there who, who's going to uh, beat Anderson Silva right now. The American Psycho is an FOP, friend of the program. Yeah. And I think he knows going to this, the, the, the numbers are stacked against him. Have you talked to him? Is he realistic of what he can do in Brazil? You know what? Uh, Stefan really hasn't been a, ga a big game plan guy. Right. He's a guy who just kind of goes forward, fights his own way, and that's actually going to help him. You don't want to go and think about Anderson Silva too much. You want to really think about what you need to do to get the win. And because of that, I really like that in Stefan. He's a warrior. He's going to go after it, and uh, I'm excited for him. Bonus question. If you were Stefan and you won in Brazil, what would you do? Uh, I would uh, put on a wig. <laughs> I would put on a mask and get out of that arena as quickly as possible. Oh, that'll do it for another edition of UFC Tonight. On behalf of Ariel Helwana, the striking Leanne Tweeden, and the striker Kenny Florian, I'm Todd Harris. We hope you enjoyed the new digs, the addition of Leanne as our social media host. It's all for you, the fans. We'll see you next time, another edition of UFC Tonight. Until then, good night, everybody.